Chris, Jazz Sequence on the internet. I am joined by Gary, Binary Gary on the internet, who is our goalkeeper in our intramural uh, Binary Jazz soccer team. Uh, I'm also joined by Allison, who is Allison Plus on the internet and is our left wing back on our Binary Jazz soccer team. Um, unfortunately, we have no other players, so we've never actually played a game. Uh, this is the show where Gary and I know nothing about what's going to be talked about, and Allison gives the subject, and we talk about it. Uh, is left yeah. wing back a real position? Yeah, it is. All right, so I don't even know what we're talking about in the introduction. So <laughs> <laughs> yeah, there are. Yes, well, we can. I'm. I'm. I'm not going to. Uh, I'm not going to take over the sh this show uh, by talking about soccer. It's it's okay. my it's my resolution. What's the premise of the show? Oh. I, I I gave you the premise, Gary. If you're listening to my introduction, it is. The I was show. thinking about left wing tackles in soccer. Is that we no. said left wing tackle? Left, left wing, wing back. Left, left wing, wing back. back. Left wing back. back. Not a wing back. nut. <laughs> wing back. Left wing tackle is a completely different position. Um, <laughs> I am left footed though, so it's perfect. There you go. That is perfect. I is could just, perfect? I sort of had this because vision of you like streaking up field. That... <laughs> What's that, Gary? <laughs> it, well, does it make sense? Like if you're left footed, so you would be on the left side so that yes. you're working outside in? Okay. Yes. I mean, I didn't know. I, just... I mean, if, if you are right footed and you're playing on the left side, then you'd be known you as... You run backwards. Uh, no. It, it's <laughs> known as an inverted winger um, because you typically are going to be running on that side, but then turning infield. And then to get bring the put the ball on your right foot. So an inverted left wing back. Yes. Is what you would be at that point. Yes. Look at look at me learning stuff today. <laughs> I don't even need to bring anything to the table now. Our work is done. <laughs> um, this show um, also has um, what was I going to introduce? Something I else. Uh, I don't know. What do we never talk about social. Follow us on social. Yeah, there's a Twitter account, Binary Jazz, and we have a website, binaryjazz.us. Uh, we've got a couple questions. You can send in questions. your questions at that website. You can submit your questions. You can also submit them uh, to us on Twitter. Uh, and we are on iTunes and Google Play and YouTube. And also, uh, we have a couple Slack bots now. A handful of Slack bots. I'm so proud. Well, a very small handful. It's two hands. That's handful. <laughs> Guess the one and then the other. We have the genre nader, um, yes. which is also available as a rest endpoint if you're uh, if you're so inclined. But you can learn about the genre nader at binaryjazz.us and um, and then ground control is a uh, rocket recently launch bot. approved, recently launched rocket launch bot um, that notifies you 24 hours, five minutes, in an hour, but in the correct order before a launch. <laughs> um, and you can ask it things and. I don't know. We're trying a feedback thing on it. We'll see what happens. It might be installed on three teams at this point. <laughs> Soon you'll be offering tickets to to be on one of the launches. No. Oh man, how cool! I thought you were going to say tickets to be on one of the shows. I was oh. going to say. <laughs> Ooh, yeah, it and is Zoom, so we could we could have a fourth person yeah, right we there. We don't. We don't need to actually sell tickets for that. <laughs> yeah. You can just you can just ask. <laughs> you can just invite a person. <laughs> Yeah, if you want to be in the show, invite yourself. We'll probably make it happen. I don't see why that wouldn't work. I'm like, do you? Would you like to see a movie, or would you like to pay fifteen dollars <laughs> to, to have a conversation with yours truly? <laughs> uh, I'd pay the fifteen bucks to have a conversation with you. <laughs> the last movie I saw in theaters was Deadpool, and I it was brought to my attention that that came out two plus years ago. Two years ago? Two? Oh, yeah, two plus years ago. Yeah, long enough that the sequel is going to be yes. coming. Out. In theaters. I saw Deadpool on an airplane. I saw Deadpool on my way to Italy. I don't get out much. I don't so get out much either. To watch a movie. Yeah, exactly. I watched Deadpool and I watched uh, Guardians of the Galaxy on an airplane, and neither of them were very good. Those are good airplane movies, though. They are good airplane movies because I would never watch them otherwise. 
Yeah, you're just kind of like, I've seen it, great. Yeah. I'm a part of pop culture, but I don't have to follow along more than the, the fact that the screen is like just right in front of you. I, I tried I was... watching Doctor Strange and I, I couldn't do it. I, I got like, I got like, I don't know, a half hour into it. I'm like, yeah, I can't. I just can't. And then I tried going back to it like a different time and okay. say, okay, I'm going to give it a second chance. No, no, it wasn't worth a second <laughs> chance either. A different time on the same plane ride? Um, I think a different plane ride. <laughs> I I, uh, I was catching a uh, Trans-Pacific flight and um, I had a middle seat and the guy next to me got on and took something to make him fall asleep and then ordered a bunch of wine and then turned on a horror movie. Oh my uh, God. And so he's sitting there in his chair and he's like sort of spacing out and keeps jumping every time something happens in the movie. And it was the most disconcerting thing, but I, he was like asleep until he was in a total panic from whatever happened in the movie for like a tenth of a second. And then he was pretty much out again and i'm not sure like why that combination seemed like a great idea to him but it scared the hell out of me and i i'm trying to think what i was watching i i don't know i mean I it probably like, didn't matter at that or, point because what you're really watching is the dude next to you i mean how could you even concentrate on anything else yeah that's fair yeah i was watching the dude next to me panicking um yeah i would try to watch the movie that he was watching to anticipate his startled reaction i'm a big old wimp i don't do horror movies never have See, I used to. I was totally like, I mean, that was, I was a teenage metalhead. So uh, horror movies is like my bread and butter, but I can't do it anymore. I guess there's a thing, like there's horror movies that are like, that have that like shock fear factor. And then there are horror movies that are just like, oh, gory. Okay, gory's yeah. fine. But the shock like fear I, factor for me, I, have I think we were talking really... about my, my jaws, right? Like being afraid of sharks in the bathtub when I was a kid. So I have a really to low tolerance these days for like dread. Like, um, I, 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 we, so, so we have, um, so much we, already. we, yeah, really, we use Plex and Plex will play like the theme song of the song before, you know, if you're on the, the, the page. And so Handmaid's Tale, um, I hear the music and I'm, I'm immediately full of anxiety. Like, I'm just, oh my God. Oh my God. Like this last time that we put on Handmaid, like, I, I go into it like every, every we, we we decide okay well, should we watch should we watch it and I, I have it I click on the episode and then I hear the music I'm like oh I can't I can't do it I can't. <laughs> so it's a, this is a television show or a movie? The Handmaid's Tale is a television show. Okay, I read the book. Book? Yeah, a book. It's about a couple of years back. I don't. They're on to season two, show. so they're past the book now. Oh. Which would increase Damn. my feeling of dread. Yeah. <laughs> because because yeah i sort of want to continue the story but i don't <sighs> yeah yeah it's good it's really good it's really I, really good I, it's yeah. just terrifying <laughs> yeah i don't i don't know that i can do it not it's, it's not terrifying like boo scary it's just no it's existential dread yes exactly yeah. I've got so much of that going on. <laughs> yeah, I don't exactly yeah. like. It's just out in that department. And it has a lot of that. So, <laughs> like when building the character, right? That slider got kicked up. Yeah, it really got kicked up. <laughs> well, I, I mean, know what the balance was to weigh it out, but like I haven't. So I haven't seen Jaws ever um, because my I grew up. My folks' place is right on the beach, and so I was obviously a huge ocean kid yep um, and i made the decision at some point to be like no <laughs> yeah, good call. Good yeah. Call. yeah what about sharknado <laughs> sharknado i've only seen clips of mm. or maybe i've not. only seen clips of it too you know there are no good hurricane movies there's a lot of other sharknado like, sharknado <laughs> might be <laughs> <laughs> It's a, that's a tornado of sharks. Yeah, it's, so. it's true. It's, it's true. not a, like a hurricane it's is totally a different, different beast. Anyway, we are here to talk about something, not existential dread and horror right. films. <laughs> uh, maybe actually we are. I don't maybe know. we are. We don't know the topic. <laughs> it's entirely possible Allison's going to drop horror movies. <laughs> the topic this week is ex existential dread. <laughs> uh, <the> topic. <laughs> it's a downer. <laughs> And the Sad Bastard pl playlist uh, this week is sponsored by Binary Jazz. Sponsored by <laughs> Pestilence. <laughs> <laughs> um, the topic this week is Petrichor. Petrichor. 
a petrichor. Uh, can you use it in a sentence? <laughs> <laughs> I petrichor you, and therefore you are petrichored. This sentence includes the word petrichor. <laughs> So, <laughs> boy, that would make the uh, <laughs> the spelling be so much more fun, wouldn't it? <laughs> I mean, look, kids should, should be challenged. <laughs> <laughs> um, Petrichor, obviously, we need to go back to it's a it's a genre. Speaking of the genre, Nato, Nato, Petrichor is a genre. genre. Nato? <laughs> <laughs> There's something there. We're gonna use that for something. <laughs> I don't know what. But. Oh, we need a new command. We need a new command. Yeah, that's for sure. <laughs> Just a whirlwind of genre. <laughs> <laughs> Petr Petricor. Pet can you can you say it again? I'm not sure. I Petricor. It's Petricor. it's like grindcore, except uh, except petrifying. No, 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 no. You're going the wrong direction. Petricor, obviously. Uh, Petra is, uh, means five, right? So. Well, maybe I should five. P E T R I C H O R. Oh. oh, darn. Cause I was really hoping that it was, it was like grindcore or hardcore with like <laughs> horror be. lyrics. It's still be. Yeah, see if you drop the E in, in uh, East Germany. Mm -hmm. Huh. Obviously. Obviously. I don't, I don't know that I even have like a inkling as to what this is. <laughs> uh, core means heart, and Petra, like you said, is five. So it's the five chambered heart. It's the five chambered heart. That sounds like a, That sounds like it's not survivable. You, your heart has five, five chambers. Your Isn't heart it? has five chambers. I thought I had four. <laughs> Maybe it has four. <laughs> Pretty sure. It's, I think it's. Four, but I don't. I mean, I'm I'm thinking back to the the they might be giants <laughs> lyrics uh, about mammals, and it's possible they said four and not five. It's so, possible, but but this so this is a five chambered heart. Well, now there you have you me go. second guessing myself. I, <laughs> I I I'm fairly certain it's four, but if it's five, if if you have the wrong number, I would assume it's not survivable. Can we agree on that? Let's start with agreement today. <laughs> I don't know. I, I maybe I. Look, I'm not a doctor. I just play one on TV. So I don't even do that. And you can watch and you can watch that episode for fifteen dollars. <laughs> Go to my Patreon. <laughs> oh wow, that's a thing um, we should do. No, I don't think so. Because Patreon <laughs> takes an awful lot of money. I think what we need to do is build um, an open source version thereof. People can determine what they want to use for credit card processing, and at least then bear less load of the Patreon logic. I, I feel like if people are looking to give us and or me money, um, <laughs> I'm a, I'm available on many different paths that don't that don't even involve <laughs> interaction. <laughs> That's true. That's true. You can just mail me. Mail me <laughs> <laughs> just just send Alice and money. <laughs> so I did I did receive payment from a client um, client friend of mine doing some work for. Um, on on uh, via text message on Apple Pay. Have you had this? Have you done this yet? I haven't done Apple Pay. I've done Venmo. It was so cool. It was like I got a message that you've got cash. I'm like, okay, <laughs> and that, that was it. Like now I have cash, and it just I set it up and put it in my bank account, and that was like this is way easier than the old like uh, I guess like a Venmo or PayPal or what do you 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 know like just message text message boom there's cash like well, all right. I mean, and the message you have money is always welcome. <laughs> <laughs> that, I think that was a part about it, yeah, that was really exciting. <laughs> Sweet. Yeah. I had yeah. a friend who went on a date um, that didn't pan out, I guess, like the other party would have liked, and he then Venmoed for his hat, like for the hat, like all the things she then, he had previously treated for and then wanted, <laughs> wanted to be owed for after the date had completed which I was that's always what I think of now when I think of that which is that's, like that's a pretty uh, uh I'm trying to find the right word punk ass move yeah <laughs> yeah I mean it's there's there's no coming back from that basically but I mean I, I, I way to have stories told of you to yeah. ever, <laughs> I only have just, Venmo uh really for when I was getting stuff and selling stuff on 
on Facebook Marketplace because that's what other people used. Because uh, I would totally oh, use anything else. It's and it's it's the accepted way of paying for items when you add them to your Petrocore collection. Exactly. The Petrocore collection. Yeah. What a it's good a shelf part. in my office. This is all the Petrocore Full items. Petro is the plural, which is Petrocore, obviously Petrocores? off screen. So oh no, you it's cannot... Petrocoral. Petrocoral, right? Petrocoral. <laughs> which is, is a particular a type of coral. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> Petro Petrocore. Huh. Um, it's probably an Adam. <laughs> yeah? yeah. Okay. Well, then it's not what I was gonna gonna uh, guess here in a second because I was gonna guess that it is a uh, an additive uh, <laughs> fluid for used use in fracking. So you add Petrocore to the water that you're pumping down to help solidify the walls so they don't pump methane into the water pipes of the locals. Yeah, but frackers don't care about that. <clears throat> They do to the point that they're not blowing things up, or they do to the point they're not blowing themselves. As many up. things, <laughs> yeah, yeah. I was like, wait a minute, do they care about the not blowing things up or not blowing themselves up? Yeah. Hmm. I feel there's more pragmatism than that. I'm defending crackers. I feel there's more pragmatism than that in the sense that, <laughs> in the sense that, do you get, do you ever get these things where you find yourself in a situation going, how the hell did I get here? So here I am. Um, but, but, but I feel, I mean, there's a private, like the, the onus of a business, right, is to um, increase value to shareholders. So if you're blowing people up, you're probably going to invite more federal oversight if people are blowing up. So they want to limit on the administration. explosive even so, there's enough. There's, there would be enough outcry that that the uh, as yet unlicensed media could interact in such a way that draws attention to exploding people, right? <laughs> like, oh, your drinking water's not safe. That's fine. We can live with that. People are literally exploding. Like, that's where we draw the line. You know, I I would like to think that that's where we draw the line. I would Maybe like I'm to wrong. You drew the line in a lot of places. Um that the line doesn't seem to it keeps moving yeah yeah well my my yeah my point being, though, that, 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 that the overton window the line not, just keeps moving this is not a a uh, a situation where it's a a moral decision to not blow people up <laughs> it is a shareholder decision to not blow people up <laughs> which is already showing that the line has moved quite a bit yeah. <laughs> i don't think so i think corporations have always been absolute dirtbags i think that that that's that's been, in, I mean, not all corporations, but generally corporations, large corporations, like that's the, if you Yes, but if the deciding if have, factor is, is, is what, of what benefit blowing people up is to shareholders, if that's the deciding factor to not blow people up, then we've already gone way too far. I mean, but look at, look at, look at medicine, like, you know, 40 or 50 years ago, um, before we had, well, I guess it was probably longer than that. When do we start getting really good oversight and uh, on uh, drugs? Depends on um, what you define as really good. <laughs> okay, yeah, that's a better point. <laughs> um, any kind, any kind of actual oversight, right? On on uh, on drugs. I mean, prior to that, it was like, well, here's some here's some bleach, and you drink it, and it's you're gonna you're not gonna feel great for a while, but it's gonna cure whatever ails you. Like, and you could you could put that blanket statement out there, you know, like the the snake oil concept was a thing. I mean, it's not you know. So at some point there was there was oversight that came. Cocaine, like, mm -hmm. it's good for you. Also, that's what this this episode sponsored by cocaine. Petrocore. <laughs> is Petrocore a brand of cocaine? <laughs> Does cocaine uh, have brands? I was just gonna ask. <laughs> I have no idea. <laughs> I mean, like maybe I'm just showing how much of a square I am here. But like <laughs> I think it's okay to be square on the topic of cocaine. I'm yeah. I'm I'm okay with being out about that. I feel I feel pretty comfortable <laughs> in my my rule following in that one arena. <laughs> <laughs> um, one of the few arenas where I'm like, yeah, I'm okay opting out of this. It's all right. Just <laughs> just a, that way. For absolute clarity, we don't need to know about cocaine to know about Petrocore, correct? It's not like a prerequisite correct. for this conversation. Okay. No, nothing all right. Good. It. Good. Good. <laughs> Because I'm qualified. <laughs> I bet you are. <laughs> um, that wasn't meant to insinuate anything specific. It was just a thing that I qualified. say. We're all qualified individuals in our own way.
we're all qualified to talk about things that we know nothing about, whether or not we are actually qualified to talk about those things individually. Of course. Deeply qualified. Um, boy, I, I don't even have like a, like a, a spark of an idea as to what the heck this is today. I do appreciate when you both try to break down the word into like its roots though. Cause like, did either of you take, I can't remember. Did either of you take like Latin or Greek or? No, but I'm a Catholic, so. Right. <laughs> and I grew up in a Greek city. Or I, formerly Catholic. There you go. <laughs> the city I grew up in is still, is still Greek. Roots of word. <laughs> <laughs> so I think I said this before, but the city I grew up in like um, largest Greek population in the US uh, per capita. Um, because it was the, at one point it was the sponge driving capital of the world when they overfished off the islands of Greece. They came to um, the edge of the Gulf of Mexico and uh, fished for sponges. And then synthetic sponges showed up and killed the economy entirely. Um, but so as, as a result, lots of, lots of Greek folks. And I didn't know um, for a lot of years that um, Epiphany and Greek Independence Day were not holidays because our schools were closed because there weren't enough substitute teachers in the county to handle all the Greek teachers taking the day off those days. Um, oh. so, so I didn't take Greek, but. So you got extra time off from school is what I'm hearing. <laughs> no, I'm sure. They made those days up on other, at the end of the year, we, probably. Yeah, because we always had that, like, and there's, and there's always the swing for hurricane days. Like, we, got, we have that built in. That, you, have a, you have hurricane days? So, like, in, we have snow days, but, like, hurricane days, that. It sounds <clears throat> cooler than it is. Here's the deal, right? So hurricane days come about whether or not, um, as a kid, they're great, but. It, well, no, not really. As a kid, they're like, here's the way they work. So that would be horrible. If like if you're home from school because there's a hurricane day, that means there might be a hurricane. <laughs> yes, but what happens is they have to decide if they're going to, the schools are generally built to be used as hurricane shelters. So oh. if there's going to be a hurricane, if there's a hurricane coming and it looks like, oh, we may be impacted by this, schools will generally close like a day or two before it will make impact. So that means you're out of school in the peak of hurricane season, which is also the peak of, you know, summer in Florida when it's you know, 95 and 100% humidity, which I, as a kid, you don't care, but um, I guess, I guess it's great as a kid, but, but ultimately, like, you may, may or may not have a hurricane, but you may have hurricane days, um, and, and then you have to wait for them to clear all the, the, the hurricane shelters out, and then you go back to school, but they kind of build that into the calendar, that there's the expectation that there will be some hurricane days, and uh, yeah. I didn't get any of these days in California. I don't. Yeah, California doesn't have any of those things. Utah has, Utah has days, huh? snow days. There's um, no earthquake days. <laughs> yeah, it's true. Well, because you can go to school with an earthquake. That's fine. Yeah, Just get under your desk. Cool. The building collapses on top of you. It's fine. Get under your desk in a doorway. So, hope for the best. In all seriousness, what's the, like, earthquakes? You, you collectively have lived in between the two of you, California, for decades, I would assume, right? What's the yeah. worst earthquake you've been through? You were there in 89, uh, yeah, I was 80. 89, yeah. How close were you? I mean, like, what kind of impact did you feel on that? Like, did your house shake like um, were fine, or was it like, oh, we lost things? No, it was, we didn't lose things in the sense that, like, I lost a home. It was, uh, I, I remember distinctly, uh, I was, I had a paper route at the time, so I was folding newspapers. Uh, I was watching. I was watching Ghostbusters as I was folding newspapers. It was the scene where uh, the demon is loose, running through New York City, uh, and about to eat slash bite slash who knows with uh, Rick Moranis, and he's up against the glass window of the restaurant. Uh, this is how like specific this memory is. Like I was. So I'm. I'm folding newspapers and we're at that scene and the, the, and we lived in an apartment and my parents are gone cause they worked all day. Um, so I, I was latchkey kid. So I was doing the stuff and, and room started shaking and, um, and so I run under the, the dining room table and I'm looking across, uh, to the TV and I can literally see the TV bouncing. Um, but aside from like, an old ceramic uh, bunny bank that I had breaking. We didn't lose things. Nothing really was affected for us. We were not, I mean, this was in Millbrae, which is like 15, 20 miles from San Francisco-ish. Um, so it wasn't, it, and it was, it was an apartment building and we were on the bottom floor. So it wasn't like a whole lot of stuff like shook around a whole lot. I mean, it shook around a whole lot, but it didn't, like, break anything. 
but I've been also like I've been through earthquakes uh, where you didn't like if you what's interesting is is if you're on if you're driving during an earthquake you don't feel it because the motion of the car like I don't know compensates or something it's really bizarre so like you go home and you realize oh there's an earthquake and I drove I was on the freeway or something yeah. I um I went to Cal I was in college with a guy that I had met I don't know how I met him I, I had met him probably five or four months of college and so I knew him but he growing up he was he lived out there and after um the earthquake uh 88, 89. When was it? Was it 89? It was 89. Doesn't matter. 89. He, he, um, he slept in the backyard in a tent because he was afraid for, for days. And his parents let him. He and his brother slept in the tent because they were worried that stuff was going to fall down. And I don't know how rational that fear was, but I, I don't know. That's what stuck with me because I'm used to like, you know, knowing that death is impending with hurricanes days and days out versus like suddenly there it is, right? So there's comfort in hurricanes. It's well, um, just the other one, in hurricanes. Well, it's like, better than house, an earthquake. You the, know house I, the house I grew up in was like is kind of on pillars because of the tides, um, and so when an earthquake mm. happened, it um, doesn't shake so much as sway a oh. bit, <laughs> um, which is oh, really God. weird. Um, it's actually that's actually structurally more sound than than a building that doesn't move at all. That's why brick yeah, buildings yeah. are horrible for for earthquake resistance because they don't move at all. So they can't absorb any of the movement of the earth. So then they just crumble. Mm -hmm. Or as Ani DeFranco says, what doesn't bend breaks. That's true. <laughs> um, and Very wise woman that. <laughs> so I never get to reference. <laughs> yeah, nice poll. <laughs> and we had this um, aquarium and I just remember for like larger earthquakes like this, water like sloshed out of the aquarium entirely and like fish would like just be like flung out and then <laughs> I also remember that like this one of in one case the sturdiest like the sturdiest thing to get under was our foosball table just because it was like, <laughs> in the middle of this room so there were no like doorways to get under and so my mom and I were under the foosball table and I just remember being like really upset because I could see the fish coming out of the aquarium and like landing and splatting and then like Aww. wanting to like go throw like get them back yeah. in and having to wait for the earth like for it to all like stop and then my mom being like priorities and like <laughs> and not wanting me to like be running around the house collecting fish. fish during an earthquake i mean <laughs> realistically that i mean sure if, if the building fell on you and you're underneath a foosball table or a dining room table nothing's going to i mean maybe you might be able to make it through i mean it's it's still like the chance your chances of survival are not very great it's just to make you feel like it's you're totally the duck and cover 1950s like nuclear sure. fallout like you know yeah oh we're going to we're going to overcome <laughs> Uh, nuclear holocaust by getting under our desks. Yeah, we're in control, even when we're not in control. <laughs> so the, the, the hurricane equivalent is go to the central most room in the house, right? That has the most structure, generally the bathroom, the smallest room. So, and that way, if the roof blows off, it's not very likely things will come plummeting as they fall out of the sky onto you because, you know, the angle that's going to be blowing in the wind. So you're kind of protected on all sides by the studs that are remaining. And you're in the washroom, which is a win-win. <laughs> well, and often in that case, the problem is that there's no running water because there's no oh. electricity to run the pump station. So it's like fill your bathtub with water and you need a gallon of water per person per day and you know all that kind of mm -hmm. silliness. So June 1st is coming. Get ready to fill up my, my jugs of water for the season. Oh, jeez. <laughs> <laughs> well, I, I didn't for years. We even, we even had evacuate years ago a bunch of times. But, but the last two summers, um, Jacksonville has been hit um, reasonably hard. I mean, nothing like terribly destroyed, but I mean, we had some flooding last year and um, downtown Jacksonville was underwater for a uh, couple days and uh, I lost major chunks of my favorite tree. <laughs> Actually, that tree right there. So we're at the timer point. point. <clears throat> we haven't even asked for... Uh... What is it? <laughs> no. <laughs> so what is Petrichor? What is so Petrichor? Petrichor is the earthy smell that happens when it rains after it's been dry for a while. I um, do love that. I thought you would. Um, 
so actually it's made if i want to break it down from the roots for you petra is from the greek meaning stone and the ichor is the fluid that flows in the veins of the gods in greek mythology wow uh, yeah uh and it's so it's combined with something else that's called geosmin geosmin which is like kind of the earthy it's what it's the chemical that gives beets that like really earthy taste that some people love and some people just are like i'm eating dirt <laughs> um and so combined with that and ozone and geosmin is what you smell when there's rain coming oh and i love that it's yeah. it's the coolest thing yeah. petrichor I, I like it even more now yeah. <laughs> <laughs> well, it was we actually even like i think they made up the term for it in the 60s when they were doing um they did a bunch of scientific experiments as far as like trying to break down the chemical compounds that were making up the smell. Wow, we need to be scientists. <laughs> we actually have a usually it. submitted question. I'm, I'm excited. Um, although I think that Allison might have known that this was coming. I had a hunch, but I'm, I, I keep prodding it, everybody, but we'll see. <laughs> we'll see what kind of feedback, or what kind of quality questions. Ooh. Oh, pressure is on for the anonymous sub question submitter. <laughs> no. So Robin is it anonymous? Asks, no, it wasn't anonymous. It's not anonymous. It's I don't not think. Anonymous. You, you, well, it, yeah, I mean, you could put a fake name, but it's obviously not. Um, so Robin Wait. asks, "How is it obviously not? How because know it's not because the name Robin? submitted because the name submitted matches the email address." I I feel like you could still make that work. I'm gonna go well, yes, I mean, you could, you could create could, a, a whole fake identity. This person. Well, I don't know. I, I, know haven't got, I haven't figured that out yet. I have more research to do. The question <laughs> is, was the Game Boy good? Yeah. Yeah. I, um, I will answer that question. Great. I will answer that question in the affirmative. And the reason why the Game Boy was good is because I didn't have one. Because I think um, if I had one, it probably wouldn't be nearly as good as it is, as it was in someone else's possession, and then having to like borrow and like cheat and like steal and like get every opportunity to play freaking Tetris <laughs> that I possibly could, like sneak little Tetris <laughs> games. The, the yeah. Game Boy was good because um, it was it was one of the early attempts at putting computers in our hands. Mm. That's a much better answer. I like both those answers. I didn't have a Game Boy, but I, uh, but that, I coveted one as a result. So that's why I liked them for right. sure. Um, yeah, I mean, but and now there's, and now there's yeah. a, I don't, I don't know if this existed when the Game Boy was actually out, but there's a, there's a, like a chiptune uh, sequencer music program for Game Boy. And maybe it just works on emulators, but maybe it actually was always in existence and only certain people had them. I don't know, but like a lot of like chiptune music um like the really like hardcore like we're doing super retro stuff is actually made on the game boy which i think is like bizarre and fascinating and awesome that's cool hmm. yeah huh. nice More things I can do. okay now i have to pick up the slack here <laughs> I'm Why do that? if i get enough people to submit questions every week i don't have to do this portion it's true <laughs> um what was the last magazine that you read on purpose wired why because i have a yeah. subscription oh, okay. i no longer have a subscription when i travel I it is the first magazine time. i purchase no. uh, that was my that was my follow-up question were you in an airport <laughs> <laughs> yeah we have a subscription to wired i haven't read it in months um because i've just not um and also it hasn't been as good as it used to be um yes agreed it got small about three years ago four years ago like the, yeah. the length dropped significantly um and then we really also have a, a couple good long-form articles that yeah yeah i feel like after chris anderson left as editor-in-chief it sort of went downhill anyway um and we have a subscription to national geographic which i occasionally pick up largely that's there to like be put on surfaces and then if the kids pick it up then there's like far worse things they could be reading just the theory. Yeah, I should do National Geographic for the kids. Do they huh. still have like um, 
Ranger Rick and those magazines. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, Rick. we did Ranger Rick for a little while. I think Tyler's not doing it now, but it's uh, I don't know. It doesn't feel like there's a lot of content there. Yeah. Yeah, I feel like I could I could put out a better publication than Ranger Rick. My daughter Wait, gets no, a highlight subscription. Time, Gary. <laughs> I showed up for two meetings yesterday um, with Charlotte strapped to me, and she like slept through her first lunch. And she's gonna be so mad when she wakes up hungry. And she never she didn't wake up on me. Like Rhonda got home, and here you go. And then she woke up like, oh my god, I didn't eat. <laughs> right. um, but yeah, I mean, I'm like on these calls, and she's just she's passed out. It's like wearing like a nuclear vest, like radiating heat. <sighs> the best yeah she's so great except for the the part where you sleep through lunch then i mean like i'm grumpy as well <laughs> yeah oh I, it, well, that was just first lunch she got second lunch oh, yeah. <laughs> no. small children are like hobbits country, i know <laughs> they are they totally are except um, without the furry feet <laughs> maybe yours are <laughs> man i you know i Someone said, like, boys smell, right? Like, when we had a boy, he was really young. Boys smell. I that he's, like, you know, seven, eight years old. Like, man, boys smell. Like. This is a true like, thing. Wow. I, I, don't, I don't, I mean, I guess I smelled that way when I was his age, but, you know. And then it's, like, in the shower with you. He's like, oh, do I have to? Like, yeah. Yes, this is a thing that humans do. We bathe. Like, you know. I'm glad to hear that these are values you're instilling. Bathing? Yeah, it's <laughs> general it's, hygiene. <laughs> a few times a week is, is something. <laughs> a few Drum times a back. week. <laughs> <laughs> Chris, I'm in Florida. I don't know if you've That's seen it. Like, heard about us That's in the news. True. Like, yeah, it's standards true. are not really. <laughs> That's fair. <In> Florida. <laughs> no, we it, haven't um, we haven't hit our peak months yet, so we'll get there. My last question is too big of a question for less than a minute. Well, yeah. it's one. been the case for the last I know, so. it's, and it's a big one. That's why I should just, I'll lead with it next time. Maybe that'll just be my topic. Unless a user submits a question, they take precedent. Well, so yeah, sure. that's the thing. Yeah, Robin's a fake name. And in the best way, Robin keeps submitting questions. <laughs> is that, is that a, was that a comic book? Robin stole my thunder? Robin stole it my thunder. It is now. <laughs> Another Binary side. Jazz presents Robin Stole My Thunder. <laughs> let's, let's go back to the, the genre NATO real quick. So, <laughs> like, I wonder I if we could do... data visualization. I agree. All the genres yeah. swirling. That's what I'm thinking. Well, maybe not all of them because I have no idea how to generate all of them. Genre well, not all, all of them, them, but like 25. Yeah, and so we need we need some kind of way to render that out to a GIF, right? But that can be done using like P5 or. Um, processing or something i think or d3 so, i don't know one of these uh, one of these newfangled javascript things <laughs> yeah yeah I'm just gonna keep putting Wait. words together in order until <laughs> somebody tells me it makes sense <laughs> thank you for listening to binary jazz if you like this episode you can subscribe to us on itunes or google play you can visit us online at binaryjazz.us or follow us on twitter at at binary jazz don't forget that you can ask us a question through the forum on the website or on Twitter, and we'll read it aloud on the next episode of Binary Jazz.